Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others, so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. As Stanley entered the lounge, he was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, of admitting that he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that, and in such a competitive economy, was it really worth taking that risk? All because he believed everyone had disappeared? his boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. Everyone I know simply vanishing out of the blue, there's almost no other explanation for it. And a nagging fear began to creep up in his mind. Questions that had been there all along. He just hadn't put his finger on them yet. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Was he just walking around in circles? Where am I, he thought. And the more he found himself unable to answer these questions, the more questions continued to arise, until he came to the issue that had been slowly bawling, until he could ignore it no longer. Why is there a voice in my head? dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking. Suddenly, every door slammed shut. No, Stanley screamed. I need to get out of here. I need to know that there's something out there. I need to know it's not just all in my head. And he screamed and clutched at his skull as the voice grew harsher and the music in the background rose higher and higher. And then, moments before collapsing to the ground, Stanley clenched his fists and screamed to anyone who might be listening, I'm not real! I'm not real! Don't believe any of it! None of it's real! And then everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She got dressed, went to work, clocked in, clocked out, and then she walked home. But her walk on this day was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Moments after seeing him, she would turn, run to the nearest police station, and call for an ambulance. But for just a few brief seconds, she merely stood there, unable to move. The tragedy was not the death of a single person, it was that she would never know this man's story, never hear in his own words what had happened to him, or what he believed had happened to him. For to know these things would be to exist inside the head of the man himself. So all she could do was observe from a distance and pity him. But Mariella had places to be and people to meet with, very important people, whose impressions of her would affect her career and indeed the rest of her life. She stood there for only a moment, looking down at the body, and then she ran.